بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Last week we spoke about العتبة ابن ربيعة and how he tried to speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one-on-one and he tried to get him to leave the da'wah of Islam and he made many statements to him saying to him if it's money you want we'll get you money if it's women you want we will get you the most beautiful women and marry them to you if it's power you want we will make you the king of the Arabs but just leave the preaching of this religion because it's causing a lot of problems for us and the Prophet ﷺ, after patiently listening to the ridiculous words of Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, he said, ya Aba Walid? Are you finished, Ya Abu Walid? And then he said, Now listen to what I have to say. And he started reciting the Quran. And he recited from Surah Fussilat, beautiful ayat of the Quran. And he read all the way up to the ayah of Sajdah in Surah Fussilat. And the Prophet ﷺ made Sajda. And then he told Utbah, this is what I have to say. And Utbah returned to his people. He returned to the leaders of the Quraysh who were waiting for him to see how the conversation went. And they said, Wallahi, laqad raja'a Utbah. Wallahi, Utbah has come back with a face that is different than the face that he went with. So definitely Utbah was very much affected by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't have to speak to him with any words from himself. All he said to him, all he recited to him were the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was enough of an answer for what Utbah had to say. So Utbah came back to his people and said, just leave him alone. Don't try to mess with him. Don't try to fight him. If other groups of the Arabs fight him and they kill him, okay, then you'll be, you'll be rid of him without having to actually even do anything. But if he becomes powerful, if he becomes victorious, if he becomes successful, then his success will be your success. His power will be your power. So Utbah tried to talk to them in this way. And they responded to him by saying, Saharaka Muhammad. Muhammad has done magic on you. And Utbah, out of the pressure that he was feeling from his people, he didn't want to lose his status with them. He didn't want to lose his respect with them. So he did not accept Islam. And he stayed upon the religion of kufr and shirk. So this was one of the many attempts of the leaders of the Quraysh to stifle the da'wah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And last week we spoke about many of their attempts and how they tried to go to the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They tried to go to Abu Talib and tried to get him to stop his nephew. They tried so many different ways. They came from so many different angles to try to stop the spread of Islam. But each and every time they failed and they failed miserably. And this was just another one of the examples of their failures. So the next attempt to stifle the da'wah came from these leaders of the Quraysh and Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira who was actually one of the most respected leaders of the Quraysh. Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira He was a very powerful man. He was a very rich man. He was a very respected man amongst the Arabs. And he and Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi from Ta'if, they were considered the most respected people of the Arabs. Al Walid ibn al Mughira from Mecca and Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi from At Ta'if. These two were considered to be the high rollers of the Arabs. They were considered to be the most respected people of the Arabs. 
the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bani Hashim, they were very respected, but their position and their status was more of a symbolic nature. They didn't really have materialistic power or authority. The respect that people had for them was more of a symbolic nature because they were the caretakers of the Hujjaj. So they had that respect for having that type of a position. But materialistically and authority-wise, they really didn't have power. And we spoke about how poor Abu Talib actually was. But Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, he had actual materialistic power and authority and respect and status amongst the people. So he was considered the most respected man of Mecca. And Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi was considered the most respected man in Al-Ta'if. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Zukhraf, وَقَالُوا لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ When the Qur'an was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these people, they said, لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ Why was not this Qur'an revealed to one of these two men of these two cities? Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira from Mecca or Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi from al-Ta'if. These are the most respected people to us. So why wasn't the Qur'an revealed to them? If it was revealed to one of them, yeah, then we would accept it. But it was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is not of such a high status to us. This was their thinking. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that statement. Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik? Are they the ones who divide the mercy of their Lord, of your Lord? Are they the ones who choose who receives this special favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to decide. Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik? Are they the ones who decide who gets the rahmah of Allah and who doesn't? No. This is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ And your Lord creates what He wills and He chooses. اللَّهُ يَصْطَفِي مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Allah is the one who raises up messengers from His angels and from the people. This is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide who gets this honor. So they were upset. Why didn't it come to Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira? Why didn't it come to Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi? So this gives you an idea to the respect that they had for Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. So he was extremely rich, he was extremely powerful, he was extremely respected. And when Al-Walid spoke, people listened. When Al-Walid spoke, people gave weight to what he had to say. So Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira happened to hear some verses of the Qur'an. He happened to hear some verses of the Qur'an. And what was his reaction to hearing those verses of the Qur'an? What statement did he make after hearing the recitation of the Qur'an? He said, Wallahi inna lahu lahalawa, wa inna alayhi latalawa, wa inna a'lahu lamuthmir, wa inna asfalahu lamughdiq, wa innahu layuhattimu ma tahtah. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَعْلُوا وَمَا يُعْلَى عَلَيْهِ وَمَا يَقُولُ هَذَا بَشَرٌ When he heard the Qur'an, Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira from the kuffar of the Quraysh, he said, this speech, it has a sweetness to it and it has a charm to it, it has a beauty to it. And surely the high part of it is fruitful. He's comparing the recitation of the Qur'an to a tree. He's saying, surely the high part of it is full of fruits and the low part of it is intense in its bounty. And surely this speech is the highest form of speech and nothing can top this speech. Nothing can be better than this speech. And surely it destroys anything that is under it. It is unique. And there is nothing that can compare to it. وَمَا يَقُولُ هَذَا بَشَرٌ And this is not the speech of a man. This is not the speech of a man. So these were the words of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira when he heard the recitation of the Qur'an. And he didn't mean to give da'wah. 
by saying this. But these were his honest thoughts when he heard the recitation of the Quran. Now when Amr ibn Hisham heard that Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira had made this statement, he became afraid. And who is Amr ibn Hisham? Amr ibn Hisham is more commonly known as Abu Jahl. He is more commonly known as Abu Jahl. He was from the staunchest enemies of Islam from the beginning. So when Abu Jahl, Amr ibn Hisham, heard the statement of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, he became frightened. He said, Al-Walid, he is the most respected man amongst us. If it gets out that he has said this about the Quran, people are going to become Muslims. Because people listen to what, what Al-Walid has to say. So he thought, what, what can I do to stop this? So he went to Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. And remember, Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira is the most powerful, most respected, richest man amongst them. So Abu Jahl goes to him and says, Ya Walid, we are collecting money for you. We are collecting money for you. Imagine going to a rich person and saying, we are collecting money for you. Very disrespectful thing to say. But why did he say it? He said, we're collecting money for you because we feel that you have been affected by the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we think that you are just trying to get in the good books of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that if he ever becomes powerful, if he ever becomes victorious, then you will be part of that as well. And you will get the benefits of that as well. You will become richer and more powerful because you supported him from the beginning. So we think that this is probably the reason why you, you said this speech about the Quran, about the beauty of the Quran, because you want to get in good with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because you think that he's going to one day become powerful and you can be right in there with him and you can gain the benefits as well in terms of wealth, in terms of power, whatever it is. So Al-Walid became very offended by this. He said, what are you talking about? You know that I am the most powerful and I am the richest person amongst you. What do you mean? You're collecting money for me? from me? You're collecting money for me? I'm a charity case? He became very upset. And then Abu Jahl said, well, this is what it looks like because that's what is being said because of what you said about the beauty of the Quran. This is what the people are saying. So he became very upset. He said, no, this is not what I meant. I'm not trying to spread the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said to, he said to Al-Walid, Abu Jahl said to Al-Walid, okay, then you better think of something to say so that the people won't attribute this to you and think that you are calling to the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You better think of something against the speech so that the people will know that you are not amongst the people who has been affected by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Al-Walid understood this. He said, yeah, you're right. I have to do something about it. I have to think. I have to think of a way for the, this da'wah to be stopped. I have to think of a way for the people not to accept what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, He describes in great detail the thinking and the plotting of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira in Surah Al-Muddathir. So he had a brainstorming session with some of the leaders of the Quraysh. What can we say against the Quran so that the people will not listen to it and the people will not accept it. So some of them said, let's just say that it's poetry. Let's say that it's poetry. And Al-Walid said, I am the most knowledgeable person of poetry amongst you. I know not only the poetry of human beings, I know the poetry of the jinns too. Humans have a special type of poetry and jinns have their own type of poetry as well. I know both types of poetry. I'm the most knowledgeable of the poetry of humans and the poetry of jinns. And the Quran has nothing to do with poetry. It doesn't resemble poetry at all. This is nonsense. We can't say this. So they said, okay. Uh, okay, let's say that it's the speech of a soothsayer. He said, no, I know the speech of the soothsayers as well. I'm the most knowledgeable about this as well. It has no resemblance to the speech of a soothsayer at all. This won't work. 
They said, okay, uh, let's say maybe it's magic. I said, no, I know magic. I know the magicians. I'm the most knowledgeable about this as well. This has nothing to do with magic. It has no resemblance to magic at all. So then they are stuck. Everyone is stuck. Okay, I mean, we have exhausted all of the options. What are we going to say about this speech? Because it's definitely not the speech of a human being. Anybody knows that. But now you're saying we can't say it's poetry. We can't say it's soothsaying. We can't say it's magic. What are we supposed to say? So Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, he starts to think, what can we say? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَرْنِي وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ wahida." Leave me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, leave me and who I created alone. And he's talking about Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. Leave me with him. I will deal with him. وَجَعَلْتُ لَهُ مَا لَمْ مَمْدُودًا And I gave him so much wealth. وَبَنِينَ شُهُودًا And I gave him so many sons to accompany him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him so much. Yet still, he's trying to go to war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَهَّدْتُ لَهُ تَمْهِيدًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I made everything easy for him. I gave him such a comfortable life. ثُمَّ يَطْمَعُ أَنْ أَزِيدْ And now he wants me to give him more. Kalla. إِنَّهُ كَانَ لِآيَاتِنَا عَنِيدًا Never. Surely he is stubborn to accept the signs and the ayat of Allah. سَأُرْهِقُهُ صَعُودًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I am going to, I am going to punish him with a painful torment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it by saying, سَأُرْهِقُهُ Sauda. Some of the Mufassireen have said that Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira will be thrown in the fire of Jahannam and he will be made to climb a high mountain in Jahannam. Climbing a mountain is hard enough in this dunya. Imagine having to climb a mountain in Jahannam. سَأُرْهِقُهُ I will exhaust him by making him climb, go up and up and up. This is the punishment of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira plotted against the Qur'an. And remember, this is the same guy who earlier said, إِنَّ لَهُ لَحَلَاوَةُ وَإِنَّ عَلَيْهِ لَطَلَاوَةُ وَإِنَّ أَعْلَاهُ لَمُثْمِرُ وَإِنَّ أَسْفَلَهُ لَمُغْدِقُ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَعْلُوا وَلَا يُعْلَى عَلَيْهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَيُحَطِّمُ مَا تَحْتَى وَمَا يَقُولُ هَذَا بَشَرُ This is the person who said this beautiful speech about the Qur'an. That it has a sweetness and a charm and nothing can ever be higher than this speech. Nothing can compare to this speech. Now, he takes a 180 degree turn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his plotting. إِنَّهُ فَكَّرَ وَقَدَّرَ He thought, what should I say? What can I say against this Qur'an? وَقَدَّرَ And he plotted. فَقُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرَ May he be cursed. The way that he plotted. ثُمَّ قُتِلْ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ Again, may he be cursed for the way he plotted. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ Then he thought, what should I say? ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ And because he couldn't think of anything, his face changed. He frowned and his face became into a scowl. Remember, you know, sometimes when you're trying to think of something and you can't think of anything, the way that your face changes, you're frowning and your, your face becomes wrinkled. This is what happened to Al-Walid as he tried to plot against the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْ And then he turned away from the truth and he became arrogant. فَقَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ يُؤْثَرْ So he decided to say that it's magic. Remember earlier when he spoke with his people, he said, no, it's not magic. We can't say it's magic. It doesn't resemble magic. But now he couldn't think of anything else. So he said, okay, the best we can go with is magic. And the reasoning that he gave to his people about that, he was like, look, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this speech, he has separated between husbands and wives. There were some husbands who maybe accepted Islam and the wives didn't. So they got separated. Or maybe there were some wives who accepted Islam and the husbands didn't, so they got separated. So Al-Walid said to his people, look, Muhammad وسلم, with this speech, he has separated between husband and wife. He has separated between father and son. 
He has caused division amongst families. And this is what magicians do too. So he said we can compare what Muhammad وسلم, is doing to the magicians. This was his reasoning. So he said, okay, the closest we can say, let's just say it's magic. Even though he knew from his own admission, he knew that it was not magic. But he said it anyways. فَقَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ يُؤْثَرٌ This is just magic. Like the people of the old used to do magic. إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرِ This is just the speech of man. So he said that knowing that it was not true. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what his punishment is going to be. سَأُصْلِيهِ سَقَرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I'm going to put him in the fire of Jahannam. So Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira basically went to war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his book and his messenger. And of course, as we said, Al-Walid was very respected amongst his people. So this speech of his that it's, it's magic and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a magician. This speech, it spread amongst the people. And whenever the Hujjaj would come to Mecca, some pilgrims would come to Mecca, the people would say to them, there's a guy here, he's a magician, so don't listen to whatever he has to say. These are the obstacles that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to face in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the evil of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira and how he plotted against the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira and listen to the wording of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dharni, leave me. Leave me. وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ وَحِيدًا Leave me and the one who I created alone. I will deal with him myself. Don't worry about him. I will take care of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. This is something that makes you shiver. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking like this. Leave me. I will deal with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira and he humiliated him in the Quran. And he exposed him in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira in Surah Al-Qalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَّهِينٍ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّائٍ بِنَمِيمٍ مَنَّاعٍ لِلْخَيْرِ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ عُتُلٍ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ زَنِيمٍ أَنْ كَانَ ذَا مَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ سَنَسِمُهُ عَلَى الْخُرْطُومِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira with these ayat. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مُهِينَ Do not obey the person who swears a lot and who is insignificant and worthless. Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira is maheen, he's worthless. هَمَّازٍ مَشَّائٍ بِنَمِينَ he is a person who speaks with bad speech against the people and he slanders others. He is a person who prevents others from doing good, let alone him not doing good himself. If someone else wants to do good, he stops them from doing good. This is Al Walid ibn Al Mughira. Mu'tadin, he is a transgressor. Athim, he is a sinner. Utul, he is cruel. Ba'da thalika zaneem. And after all of that, he is also of illegitimate birth. He is a child of zina. So when Al Walid ibn al Mughira heard these ayat, and there are nine characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about him in these ayat. And nobody knew that Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira was of illegitimate birth. Even he himself didn't know. He himself didn't know that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shamed him. He humiliated him. He exposed him in the Quran. So these ayat in Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Al-Walid with nine characteristics. Nine characteristics. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافْ مَهِينْ هَمَّازْ مَشَّائِمْ بِنَمِيمْ مَنَّاعٍ لِلْخَيْرِ مُعْتَدْ أَثِيمْ عُتُلْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ زَنِيمْ Nine characteristics. So Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira after hearing all of this, 
after hearing these ayat, he goes straight to his mother. He goes straight to his mother. And he says to his mother, لَقَدْ وَصَفَنِي مُحَمَّدٌ بِتِسْعَةِ خِصَالٍ عَرَفْتُ مِنْهَا ثَمَانِيَةٍ وَإِنْ لَمْ تُخْبِرِينِي بِالتَّاسِعَةٍ لَقَطَعْتُ رَأْسَكِ He said to his own mother, he said, Muhammad وسلم, has described me with nine characteristics and I know eight of them are true. I know eight of these characteristics are true. He admitted he's Hallaf, Maheen, Hammaz, Masha'im bin Amim, Manna'il al Khair, Mu'tad, Athim, Utul. He admitted, yeah, these are all true. But the last one he didn't know. So he said to his mother, Muhammad has described me with nine characteristics. And I know eight of them are true. But the ninth one, that I am a child of illegitimate birth, that my father really isn't Al Mughira. The ninth one, if you don't tell me about the truth regarding this, Ya Ummi, O my mother, if you don't tell me the truth about it, I will cut your head off. He said like this to his own mother. And then his mother admitted to him. She said, yes, your father Al Mughira. And Al Mughira was a leader of the Quraysh as well. Very respected, very rich, very powerful. But Al Walid's mother, said to him, said to her son, yeah, your father, he was actually impotent. So he was not able to have relations with his wife. So he wanted a son really bad, you know, to, that was considered an honor in, the, in the, the Arab culture to have sons, you know, so he couldn't have a son because he couldn't, you know, physically he wasn't able to. So Al-Walid's mother said, so I went to one of the shepherds, you know, who would take care of our sheep and stuff. I went to one of these men and I let him, you know, come to me and you are born through that. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed him and humiliated him in the Quran. And the Quran is continued to be recited. These ayat will be recited until Al-Qiyamah with humiliation of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. So going to war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that never ever brings any good results. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذرني ومن خلقت وحيدا. Leave me with the one who I created alone. I will deal with him. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with him, that we continue to recite verses of humiliation to Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. We've been reciting them for 14 centuries and they will continue to be recited until Al-Qiyamah. So this was another failed attempt of the Quraysh to try to stop the da'wah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time they try to do something, the da'wah just gets stronger and stronger and stronger because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is on the side of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no one can harm you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping you. But these kuffar of the Quraysh, they couldn't realize it. They didn't realize it. And they just kept digging the hole deeper for their own destruction. So they were very upset that all of their attempts had failed and continued to fail. They didn't know what to do. So one day, some of the heads of the Quraysh, they were sitting at the Kaaba as they usually used to sit. That's where they used to hang out. The heads of the Quraysh, they used to hang out right at the Kaaba, talk, hang out, speak to each other about different matters. So one day they were sitting there as usual and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to make tawaf. So he was making tawaf and they saw him. This is the man that we've been trying to stop and nothing works. We can't do anything against him. So they had that hatred and that enmity towards him when they would see him. So he was making tawaf, minding his own business. So he made tawaf and when he came around the first time and when they saw him, they started insulting him and saying bad words to him and speaking to him in a bad way. He ignored it. He went around. When he came around the second time, they did it again. They spoke to him in a bad way. They insulted him. They mocked him. He ignored it. He came around the third time. When he came in front of them again, they did the same thing. They mocked him. They made fun of him. They insulted him. Now this time he said to them, he turned to them and he said, Ya Ma'ashara Quraysh. 
تسمعون تسمعون يا معشر قريش والذي نفس محمد بيده لقد جئتكم بالذبح he said to them listen oh people of Quraysh listen to what I have to say I swear by the one in whose hand the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is in I swear by Allah that my coming that my arrival spells destruction for you if you don't accept my message you will be destroyed just like Ad and Thamud and those people were destroyed my coming will be a means of destruction for you. He said that to them. And when he said that to them, then they got scared. They got very scared. They didn't expect him to say something like this. Then they tried to pacify him. They tried to speak to him nicely. They said, no, no, don't worry. Relax, it's okay. You're a good man. You're an honorable man. You're not an ignorant person. Go in peace. Because they got scared, they spoke to him in a nice way after he said that to them. And he left. When he left, they started talking amongst themselves again. They said, look, if it gets out that we were actually nice to him and we spoke to him in a good way, if the people find out about this, then maybe they will think that, yeah, we're finally warming up to his message and perhaps they will start to accept Islam. They're always scared that people are going to start accepting Islam. So they said, okay, we have to do something about it. We can't be nice to him because then people are going to think that it's okay to become a Muslim. So the next day at the Kaaba, the Prophet ﷺ was there and these kuffar of the Quraysh, they surrounded him and they said to him, are you the one who speaks badly about our idols? Are you the one who makes fun of our objects of worship? Are you the one who speaks against the worship of our our forefathers, the way that they worshipped idols, are you the one who's speaking against all of this? And they came around him and they wanted to attack him. And one of them actually did grab his, his garment. So they physically attacked the Prophet Muhammad And the daughter of the Prophet saw this. And there are a lot of men there and she's just one girl. She couldn't do anything so she ran to get help. And she told Abu Bakr, this is what they're doing to my father. So Abu Bakr, quickly, he runs out and he goes to defend the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he, <laughs> he blocks the people from getting near the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he says to them, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He used the same words as the believing person from the household of Fir'aun who hid his Iman, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Ghafir. أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا Will you kill a man? أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ Just because he says, my Lord is Allah. وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And he has actually come to you with clear proofs from your Lord. So it became physical now. They actually physically tried to assault the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But everything that they tried to do, they failed and they failed and they failed. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the side of His Messenger, nothing can stop this message from spreading. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that He and His Messengers will always be victorious. They will always overcome any difficulty. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has power and strength and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mighty. Inshallah, next week we will continue to talk about some more attempts of the Quraysh in different ways, how they tried to make compromise with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, okay, we will worship Allah, but then you have to also worship our gods. So they try to play this game as well. Inshallah, next week we'll talk about some more attempts of the Quraysh, some more failed attempts of the Quraysh to stop the da'wah. Wallahu alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allah ibarak shaykh.